So as with an ellipse, we can talk about the eccentricity of hyperbola. And the eccentricity has the same definition. It's C over A, where C is the distance from the center to either focus, and A is, again, the, the semi-transverse axis, or in, in other words, the distance from the center of the hyperbola to one of the vertices. Um, now, because in a hyperbola, let's just sketch a, a rough hyperbola. Because in a hyperbola, if those are my vertices, my foci are outside of it, we know that C is always going to be bigger than A. And since C is going to always be bigger than A, then that means that our eccentricity will always be bigger than 1, um, which is the, the sort of the complete reverse um, relationship when, as, to, as uh, compared to when we did, did eccentricity of an ellipse. The other thing is because I know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, I can think of this ratio also as the ratio of this square root over a. So if I only have a and b as information, I can I can just use that relationship. So I'll show you in the next slide the, how the eccentricity affects the overall look of these hyperbola. So here you can see a, a hyperbola with a large eccentricity, and that would mean that, um, you know, I'm just going to rough, rough, roughly sketch where the foci would be. All right, these are all centered at the origin, but, right, I could have foci that looks somewhere somewhere around there. Um, so the, the, the farther my foci are away, or um, the farther my foci are away from the vertices, the bigger the eccentricity. Um, the one in the middle is a little uh, has a eccentricity value that's a little bit smaller, so we'd imagine that the foci would be a little closer. And on the other hand, if it, if each of those uh, arms of the hyperbola really wrap tightly around the foci, they must be close. Right, and again, so again, this makes sense because e is c over a and the distance from the origin to either focus is C. The distance from the origin to either vertex is A. So uh, this is what we would expect. So the more eccentric, I guess you could say, the more eccentric a hyperbola gets, the more it looks like two parallel lines. In other words, that rounding behavior becomes less pronounced. All right, so let's prove that this equation here is a hyperbola. Let's find the vertices, the foci, and the eccentricity of it. So we're going to use the completing the square method. But first, we need to organize So we factor out a 9 to get x squared minus 4x. We factor out a 4 to get y squared minus 2y. And I'm going to take half this negative 4, which is negative 2, and square it to get a 4. I'm going to take half negative 2, which is negative 1, and square it to get a 1. And I'm going to remember that I didn't really add 4 to the equation when I plus 4 there. I added 36 because of that 9 out there. So I'm going to add 36 to balance. And I didn't really add 1. I really subtracted 4 because of that negative 4 out there. And so now I know that I've got, I've completed the square. On the right, I got 36. Now, to put it in standard form, we want a, a 1 on the right side, so we're going to divide by 36. And that gives me x minus 2 squared over 4 minus y minus 1 squared over 9 is equal to 1. So I've proven that this is a hyperbola because it's now in its standard form, um, you know, with some shifts there. So, in order to find the vertices, let's find the center. So the center is, well, this is a hyperbola that was shifted right 2 and up 1. So the center is at 2, comma 1. A picture might be helpful, actually. So there's my center. Now to find the vertices, let's remember that uh, 
this 4 here is a squared, which means that a is 2, and it's under the x squared term. That comes first. So that means I'm going to move horizontally a distance of 2 away from the center to get either vertex. So there's, there's my, there are my two vertices. So the coordinates of those would be uh, 0, 1, and 4, 1. To find the foci, well, let's note that um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And since a squared is 4 and b squared is 9, then that says 4 plus 9 is equal to c squared, which means that c is equal to root 13. And if you think about how my foci relate to the center, if you just take the center and add root 13 and subtract root 13 to, in this case, the x-coordinate of the center, since the foci are going to be on the same axis as the vertices, you'll get your foci. So we're going to keep our y-coordinates the same. But I'm going to start with my center. I'm going to add root 13. And I'm going to minus root 13. Actually, I guess I should circle everything, huh? Um, I'm going to add root 13 and minus root 13 from uh, my x-coordinate. So there are my foci. And to find the eccentricity, which is usually pretty easy, we know that it's c over a. But c we already found, that's root 13. And a we found to be 2. So if you do that division, you get a number around 1.8. So the eccentricity, remember, the lowest it can be in a hyperbola is 1. So pretty close to 1. That means that this hyperbola must wrap pretty tightly around uh, those uh, the foci. Um, and the, the, the arms would be pretty pronounced. Um, so we completed the square. We found that this was a hyperbola by putting it in standard form. There's a shift. So we found the center. We found the vertices by noting the relationship between the vertices and the center. And we found that a value from the equation. Uh, we use the Pythagorean theorem to find my c-value, which tells me how to get to my foci. And then the eccentricity is this ratio c over a, which gives us a sense of the, um, this, the pronouncement or distortion of the arms of my hyperbola. Based on this description here, we can find the equation of a hyperbola. Um, so if our hyperbola is centered at 0, 0, it has an a value of 5, an eccentricity of 2, and a horizontal focal axis. Well, that tells me that, um, first of all, the equation is going to start with a 25 here, since that's where my a squared is going to be. A horizontal focal axis tells me that the x squared term must come first, and that it's centered at the origin. I guess I could write this if you'd like, but we could have just put x squared. Um, it's going to have these coordinates. So what's left to find is really just that b. So how do we find the b? Well, we, we're going to use that eccentricity info. So if the eccentricity is 2, I'm going to start it over here. If the eccentricity is 2, um, and we know the eccentricity is c over a, well, then I know that it's c over 5. So that means that 2 equals c over 5 which means that 10 is equal to c. And that means that I can use my Pythagorean identity to find b, because a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which means that 5 squared, which is 25, plus b squared gives me 100. And that tells me that b squared is 75. So I'll put a 75 there. And now I've got an equation that satisfies all the conditions written above.